Hello, my noble knights. It is I, Blaze Templar, and I'm joined today with Curious Cleffa on our eight slash break week IPL video. Hey. Well, it's good to have you on board today. Um, I I guess this is my first collab, so I'm kind of still doing the uh, what what do I do? So. Oh, it's all good. I haven't done many either. <laughs> well, um, I guess you got to start somewhere. Anyway. <laughs> Um, this week do have a couple of announcements. We are actually not going to have any battles this week due to the fact that we're kind of trying to get things sorted. Um, and that does include with, uh, New England and Dallas, as we have seen, let's see here. I'm wanting to say four weeks, no, more than that, five weeks of default losses from Dallas and New England. And it's starting to drag down the IPL. So we're kind of at that point where we need to get that taken care of. So we're in an intermission week. It, it kind of makes sense since we are at the halfway point um, to try to get things figured out so that the rest of the league goes a lot smoother. Yeah, I just don't know how Marcus is actually going to find people who yeah. aren't going to take their records. Yeah, but... that... Yeah, that is definitely ugly. I mean, who wants to take a zero seven? Yeah, exactly. It'd be, uh, I don't know, it's so hard because it's mid-season to yeah. just drop their things because they've already defaulted so many times that those have already been recorded and inputted for all the rankings and stuff. That is definitely true, and... Well, the only thing I can think of is maybe, like, as he mentioned, he wants to make it so if you join up taking over a team, it's like a guaranteed ticket into next season. But... Yeah, I think that's decent. Because then they still have, like, seven battles. I mean, they could come back and, I don't know, maybe get fourth. Maybe. Depending on how Grant's... If Grant's going to be here for his battles next week. Or his battle next week. Oh, I, well, yeah, I haven't noticed Grant being in quite as much as some of the other battlers, so I can kind of see your point there. But my only concern is, if we're having to do this, it'll kind of make it harder for the IPL to take off if we're not even for th through the first season and we've already lost two, almost three teams. Yeah. But I think Jack said he has a few people, but I think he's busy all this week. Yeah, um, I think that's what he said, too. Um, I'm sure we can probably find some people, but kind of concerned that uh, we have this issue pop up again. So maybe we need to find something to be like an incentive or something. I don't know. Maybe. Um, hmm. Not too sure what, though. I guess maybe we could do something like, hey, if you win the season, we'll breed you a certain Pokemon or something. Or That's get true. you a legendary. I don't know. Um, fully iv to ev to legendary? That would be kind of nice as a victory <laughs> attraction. Yeah. But, That's true. Um, so we're facing a lot of issues with that, obviously. But... Is it impossible impossible to overcome? Wow, can I talk properly for once tonight? <laughs> it's late, it's late. Yeah, it's almost midnight for me, so... Uh, yeah, it's almost ten for me. Oh, goodness. Sorry it took me so long to get back once you were finally there. <laughs> it's all good, it's all good. Uh, I was just eating dinner. Fair enough. So... That's kind of where we're standing with this intermission week. We're going to try to get everything sorted so that week eight goes a lot smoother. Um, and so we have some momentum rebuilt. But if we do find people, I think it's going to be pretty interesting because from what I've been doing, I've been trying to watch how people play. And like I figured in our battle, you were going to bring the Weezing and make it specially defensive because of all my special attackers. So with bringing two, possibly three new teams in, that's just for the whole second half of the season. It's going to be new battle styles and that we're going to have to look at. That's true. It's, I mean, like, I kind of 
started reading – I watched a lot of your videos uh, with the IPL, and I was like, okay, she's brought Superior every week, so I need to have something to deal with that. That's where Weezing came into play with Hayes. Mm. Because I didn't want you to constantly contrary up uh, Leaf Tornadoes or, or – wait, that's not the one. Leaf – no, Leaf. I don't even remember this. The one that's supposed to drop your Leaf something. <laughs> yeah, that one. That had to be scared, I won't lie, because that thing outspeeds, like, my entire team, so <laughs> I had to have something to deal with it, and Weezing kind of was my check there. That and I ran clear smog on my uh, Amoongus this week. <laughs> I did not want to get swept by a superior. <laughs> uh, that's what I've been keeping him back for a lot of the weeks, waiting for it, but he just has never been able to, like, shine. Yeah, he's he's a little frail, unfortunately. That's his biggest downside. If yeah, once spread. you get once you get rid of his weaknesses and his threats and stuff, he can he can stay out there. Oh yeah, he can just walk over entire teams on his own. So <laughs> that's why I was so scared of it. I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified of that thing coming in. And the other thing I was kind of scared, which you actually did bring, was the Mew and the Trick Room. Ah. I didn't even think of that till the end. I was trying to figure out how I could... I forgot what the heck. I wrote down my whole team down here and what I was doing with everything. I think I had Trick Room because I wanted... Oh, for Mawile. Because Mawile could one-shot your Mega Deonce. And it did. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't sad. want it. <laughs> I didn't want it to. Uh, I wanted to guarantee Mawa being like the first one to attack and just knocking it out without taking any damage. But Mawa did that before me. You got the trick room up. Yeah, I was sad. I was just like, "Yay! I got it. Sleep. I could set up the tail wave, destroy the Reggie Rock rocket. Next turn, I could Earth Power the Maul while. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." <laughs> That was pretty much what I was doing that match. <laughs> uh, it was a lot of fun, though. I mean, you had some really scary things, especially with that blasted trick room. I was like, my tailwind is now my worst enemy. Oh, I know. Once I saw you tailwind, I was like, I got a trick room. I have to. Yeah. He's going to regret it. Oh, I did. I was just like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and I thought that Nido King would be like a fast scarf or, or a life orb set, so I was like, Oh no, she's got to have the earth power. She's going to outspeed me and absolutely destroy my heat turret. And then after I watched it a bit, again, I was like, wait, my Zapdos, which isn't running any speed investment outsped. Why did oh, I, I love you? I love Assault Vest. I guarantee you half my team every week has Assault Vest. It's a great item. It is a it's great so item. It's so great. I like it, especially on Raikou. I've been running that quite a bit lately. Mm. But... <laughs> Uh, anyway, before we get completely sidetracked again, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whoops, um, figured we should probably talk about the upcoming week eight schedule and kind of where teams can move from here. So week eight, we have New York against Colorado, uh, Dallas versus Chicago, California uh, against New England, Nebraska versus Cleveland, go Nebraska. <laughs> <sighs> And uh, Chicago against, well, Dallas again. So, okay, four battles. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll have all four battles this week. Mm. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, looking at the battles, just from my perspective off the top of the, you know, looking, um, the games that really are kind of the critical ones, if you will, would be the Colorado-New York game. New York cannot afford to lose that game, really. No, uh, I don't think I don't think New York can lose any. Otherwise, he's just gonna go down. I think, but yeah. I don't know. His resistance is pretty high. Not many people can knock out half his pokes. I think. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he he did a five zero the first week, a six zero or six zero the first week, five zero the second, um, and then a four zero and a two zero. So he's doing really well. He's got a more than half surviving average, which is just phenomenal. Yeah. So, um, just that is really threatening. So, if Colorado, or but even so, if uh, New York does lose, they'll be in a really difficult situation. 
they'll stay still in second, but they're going to have a lot of trouble moving up to first, too, because that'll put them two games behind unless Nebraska loses this week as well. So well, I'm hoping someone beats Nebraska. Do I hear <laughs> a little bit of salt? <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so glad we had a good battle, though. It was great. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, obviously that <laughs> would be a kind of important battle. Um, if New York does end up in, like, what week is it? Week 11 manages to beat Nebraska. And um, just assuming that these two teams go that far without losing any more matches, um, it's very possible that New York would go back up to first. That's true. So, they're still poised to get back into first, but they can't afford to lose a game if they want to do that. No, they have to just win out and hope Nebraska loses one, maybe two. If they if Nebraska loses two in the last seven weeks or the second half, then as long as uh, New York wins out, then they'll have first. Yeah. And I'm sure that's exactly what New York wants because <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't who doesn't want to win out the rest of the season? Exactly. Um, then looking at our third and fourth place, uh, or the other important game, obviously would be the Nebraska um, <sighs> Cleveland game. There we go. My brain kind of shut off for a moment, um, and that one's important mostly from Nebraska's perspective because if they lose, that will put them in second instantly if N- New York wins because New York just has a much better survival rate. Yeah. So, obviously, I I'm gonna, I can honestly say this. I can't afford to lose against Cleveland next week. I cannot afford it. No. And if Cleveland wins, then I think they bump up to third. Mm. It, I think it depends on on, uh, on the Cleffas. Yeah, it, it depends on uh, the Cleffa team, which Cleffas are... You're going up against uh, New England, I believe, is it? It is? Yeah, so it could be a new person, which is a little intimidating since we have no idea. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we don't find anyone, then it's just an automatic win, and there's there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. Um, so, on one end, it would be kind of nice for to get the new teams, but on the other, it would make your life a lot easier if you didn't have an upcoming enemy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of the Cleffas um, and Cleveland with their 4-3 records and being so close, it's literally neck and neck for those two teams right now. 1.5 for California and 1.4 for Cleveland. That's just incredibly close match. Ooh, I didn't realize it was that close. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was that close. I was just like, wow. And part of the reason why it got that close was because it was a default win and it's kind of hard to calculate um, mm-hmm. surviving pokemon that way yeah so if we actually recorded it like a normal loss uh yeah you'd still be doing a lot better so maybe that kind of shows the way that calculations aren't great but at the same time um it's been kind of hard to you know calculate defaults and stuff so oh yeah i'm just hoping after this week hopefully just defaults are we're done with them it's very hard to do rankings with them. It is. It, it's it been basically a nightmare to calculate for me. Right now, what I've been doing is basically, okay, the games you've played, or I take the number of your surviving Pokemon, divided by the games you've played. Well, games you've played divided by surviving Pokemon, or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say there. But, yeah. um, it, and of course, defaults can't tally into that, because they're not played games, so... Mm-hmm. That's kind of why Dallas Dallas still has a one survival ranking. <laughs> <sighs> Despite only having that one or two games played. Dang, they both they both stopped playing the same week. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was kind of weird. I was just like, huh. Um, and I understand why Dallas stopped playing at first with the computer issues. Mm-hmm. So I don't blame them, but I have no idea what happened to Rai. Uh, I don't know. I heard that he got braces and he didn't want to talk and whatever. But then you have uh, like Chase talking about how he uh, just wants to play Spite and stuff. So maybe he's just done with it. 
that's possible. Um, the other thing I do know is um, with Chase, I don't know. Um, I, I take some of the things he says with a grain of salt now after the one joke he pulled, but you know. Mm. Um, I, so yeah, with the smite thing though, I think you might have a point. Yeah, I'm just hoping we actually get like four battles every week. Otherwise, because week one, week two, it was, it was so fun. I just like stayed up watching the battles, it was recording all the stuff, and then week three, it's like, oh, half the teams are gone. Yeah. Well, not half, but I mean half the battles because they took out two. Mm-hmm. It, it was so frustrating. And um, wasn't that a default win week for you? No, no, that wasn't. Uh, week no, I think week four was, four was yeah. Uh, so I, I could even see in your expression just how downtrodden you were about the fact that you had to, just a free week, basically. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, for me, free wins, like, or free weeks, they kind of suck. I mean, it's cool, you get a win, and I at that point, I'd lost twice, so it's like, oh, I got a win now, but it's like, well, now I'm not battling. Yeah. So. And, I mean, Cleveland was doing pretty well. They got back up to third, and then they had those two default wins, and then uh, you came around and beat them out, so. I uh, think... was, that was a good battle, too. Yeah, it was, a very close one. I thought for a moment that Cleveland was going to win. I was like, oh, wait, you said that you won, but why is Cleveland beat? Oh, that's why. <laughs> I made sure I, I preserved who I needed. <laughs> you did a good job with that. It was really impressive. And honestly, I think the Cleveland game might have spawned a rivalry between you two. That's just my opinion, though. So, mm. I mean, Grant didn't come back this week, so that's... I don't know. Maybe there's something there. <laughs> Maybe. She's like, how dare they beat me? I'm mad now. <laughs> um, at least, the only rivalry, at least how I feel that I can say with half certainty at least, is uh, the New York-Nebraska game. Uh, I, th- I kind of think that's kind of a rivalry sparker myself. Oh, definitely. Especially with the expressions Jack had during that battle. <laughs> yes. Oh, I had I had oh, to I keep rewatching that. No, no, no. <laughs> I loved that. I was just... Absolutely amazing. I can't remember how many times I watched that part in particular. It's just like, ah. The... I was so excited. I was like, oh. With, with how Jack was winning, I was like, oh, he's gonna, no one's gonna beat him. And then you said that, I was like, I gotta watch this now. <laughs> yes, it was great. It was a it was a really fun match. And I went in with a Zapdos that only had three moves. Oh, I, uh, I saw that. I was so annoyed with myself. And another thing, is I was going to run Ancient Power on my Zapdos, and so I was like, oh, Charizard, Ancient Power. Couldn't do it because I was only running three moves. Oh. Uh, <sighs> just his Charizard there. Yeah. And then, of course, I discharge on my Dragonite that had the safety goggles, and I could have set up Rain, and that would have been great, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got a mad with myself on those moves, but it was an amazing game, regardless. And... He definitely had me really worried going into that week, so. Um, yeah, it was a fun one. And uh, I liked your game against New York. That was a really good one. And I was... Oh, that crit. Oh, I guarantee you. I'm pretty sure if that crit did not, if it if it did not crit, Suicune would have lived. I EV'd it so it would live, and I kept switching in and switching out for leftovers recovery so it would have enough to live. Because I think my Suicune was like at 98 and his solar beam was like a 90, 95%, 96% chance. I mean, it would knock it out down to like 4% HP. So I made sure mine would live, and then he got a crit. Oh, I saw oh. that. And I was sure you did that, because you needed something to deal with that Charizard. Exactly. I figured he wouldn't think I'd keep in the Suicune, so he just figured he'd get the instant KO on it, but then I'd come back and just... Oh. Boom. Mirror coat. <laughs> yeah. That would have been so beautiful. So, I don't blame you in the least. That was a just a heartbreaking moment. It was a really good game. Uh, I was really impressed with your plays there. Yeah, I think I've had pretty good games. I think my least favorite game is the one against Chicago Flock, just because I should have brought Mawile instead of Granville. Granville's a terrible fairy, if you've uh, got Mawile. Uh, well, yeah. Um, the one thing I did notice about your uh, Granville was you kept on running special moves on it. Yes, and I didn't realize that. I've never used Grumble before, but I was like, oh, he's pretty good. Like, I see him all the time on uh, 
Or is it uh, Shady Pigman? He uses him a lot, so it's like, oh, he should be pretty decent. But, he, uh, he can be, but he is not a special attacker. He has maybe like, I think it's 60 I think it's 60, attack, yeah. Special attack, so he just cannot deal damage on the special side. Nope, and I learned that thanks to that. <laughs> well, uh, Pokemon's a learning experience. Like, when I first started playing, I, um, my first competitive battle, I got kind of sort of completely annihilated by a Metagross. <laughs> <laughs> that was back in Gen 4, but first team, he sent in his Metagross, I sent in my first Pokemon, he walked away 6 0 me. Oh. It was a pretty disheartening moment, to say the least. But you kept with it. Well, all of it, I left for a little while. That was oh. that crushing, but I came back. And it was after I watched uh, a lot of Pokemon battlers and went, you know what? I know what I was doing wrong now. And I've grown and matured as a battler, so maybe I can do things now. Mm. Made my first black white team and did pretty good then. <laughs> So, yeah, it, 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 Pokemon is definitely a learning experience. All the time. Even if you think you know everything, there's so many things you don't know. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's easy to forget things you do know. Like, uh, with Jack and his magic bouncing, I've done the exact same thing. I've done that plenty of times, but I think it's more with Mega Absol, because I see it on VGC a lot. Mm. Well, not a lot, but more than Mega. Well, Mega DNC is not on VGC, but... It isn't? Oh, right, because it's an event Pokemon, right? Yeah. That, so you that see, like, I think Mega Sableye, Mega Absol, uh, they both have Magic Bounce, so and then you gotta watch out for that Espeon. Yep, I love Espeon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it's it been definitely kind of a learning thing, and the IPL has helped with that, too, to some extent. I mean, obviously not on default weeks, but... Yeah. Um... Uh, it's it's been a lot of fun there, um, but I think we've covered most of the IPL things. I mean, I'm willing to go further and go into more competitive talk, but that's kind of up to you if you want to do that or not. Oh, I'm all good. It's what uh, ten fifteen. I just got to be in bed by eleven, so I got to wake up early. So I got plenty of time. Oh, good. So. I don't actually play VGC myself. I thought about it a few times, but then I was like, then I'm going to have to deal with Smeargle, Moody, and Primal mm. Groudon, and I don't want to deal with them, so... That's kind of what was yeah. going through my head. No, I think I like VGC a lot. I mean, with, the, with playing the IPL, it's like, wow, there are some pokes that are pretty good that you don't see mm -hmm. in uh, VGC. Oh, yeah. Like, Hitmonchan, people... Say it's like one of the worst Pokemon ever. You shouldn't use it. Like um, when it was an RU, the actual official Smogon set called it "Don't use Hitmonchan." <laughs> but I can't tell you how many sweeps I've had with that thing. And uh, you know the, um, the Pokemon Classic uh, tournament that was put out by Nintendo a while back. Oh, I think so. The Kanto Classic. Yeah, the Kanto Classic. I brought Hitmonchan, and it swept several times, now that I think about it. I'm trying to remember how many. And it just constantly applied pressure. It did better than the Machamps on the opposing team, so... Oh. Yeah, people really underestimate Hitmonchan. It, it's one of those Pokemon that people think can't do things right, but if you effort value it properly, give it the right moves, and read your opponent, it can be pretty top tier. Yeah, I honestly think just a, not every poke don't use Magikarp. I tried using that. <laughs> people wanted me to use that in VGC. It, it does not work. But there's, like, uh, some people that I watch, and um, Gabby, she uses a temple in VGC, and it gets... It does work. Huh. Um, I don't I know her whole set, but it's it's crazy. Huh. Uh, Gabby, um, do you mind sending me a link to her channel sometime? I haven't I heard of her before. Oh, yeah, I will do that. I actually met her in um, the Anaheim Regionals I went to. It's pretty fun. Ooh, nice. Um, I haven't actually met very many uh, competitive battlers outside of um, IPL members and a couple others here and there, so I kind of have my little corner of the internet, and just like my corner, no one else is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
not the best opinion to have if you want a YouTube. <laughs> no, but uh, as long as you, I don't know, like if you put out good content, like to be honest, Jack, um, he's really good VGC battler, but I've noticed since he stopped uploading VGC stuff, he doesn't have the turnout of people watching his videos anymore because he's putting out OU stuff, which kind of sucks because he's good at VGC, but I think he got tired of it and... Yeah, he he did put out a video a while back talking about uh, why he doesn't like 2016's VGC, and I could tell he was really frustrated with some of the stuff in VG, VGC at that point. Yeah. And I don't blame him. I mean, I honestly would love to see Nintendo endorse a singles or rotation even uh, alternative meta just so there was more options for players. That's true. I know at a lot of, like, at regionals, they have, like, side events, but you can't go compete at, like, Worlds for whatever. It's just all side event stuff. Yeah, which, that's just kind of depressing, because, I mean, look at how many battlers are on YouTube that don't do doubles VGC format, but they're absolutely stellar at what they do. Yeah. They can't prove it in the World Tournament, because there is no meta for them. Yeah, they can never be a world champion because they play a different format. Yeah, and that's that's just horrible, really. And the only reason why it is the doubles format was because they started doing worlds in the uh, Ruby Sapphire era, and their new format was doubles. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, like, if you look at, like, the earliest um, VGC tournaments, they are actually done on Pokemon Coliseum, from what I remember. Hmm. It's the earliest ones I've found, so... Yeah, I mean, before that, Pokemon really didn't have much of a competitive scene. I mean, it kind of did, but not really, because the internet wasn't really much yet, so... (laughs) Yeah, it kind of was the Ruby Sapphire era that brought uh, the World Championships into existence. And because of that, we got the doubles format for VGC. Because didn't World start in, like, 2000 and... Well, for the VGC stuff, I thought it was 2009, 2006? I don't remember. Uh, I, I thought it was 03 myself, but I could be wrong. I know the TCG started it a lot earlier. Oh, yeah. That started out almost from the very get-go, really. In fact, I'm pretty sure it did start from the get-go. I never went to any of those events, but part of that was because uh, Nintendo actually did kind of the smart thing in uh, rotating out old cards. Uh, I mm-hmm. think that started happening after they took over for Wizards of the Coast. Um, so you couldn't use things like uh, base set Charizard and uh, then uh, Deoxys from the uh, Ruby Sapphire box or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. So uh, the nice thing about doing that was that they didn't have to uh, power up cards, so they kept the power creep down. Uh. Smart move, but um, it did make it really frustrating for battlers because it's like, I have all these great cards, yet I can't use any of them. Like, I have an Entei EX, I want to use it. I can't, it's too old. Aww. Yeah. But so. now, what they're doing now... Because they've got the expanded format, which is, like, all black and white stuff Mm -hmm. up until now. And then, like, the standard is, like, I think it's just X, Y, on. Yeah. um, Which, I do like the fact that they did the expanded. I actually have a deck from the black-white era. It's honestly not that great, because, you know, it's a a standard deck. Um, It's the uh, Blazing Days or whatever, Fast Days, which is, like, fire and grass, and it uses a cell gore. Pretty cool deck, but Hmm. it could not stand up to the XY stuff. You bring in Mewtwo EX, that deck is going to just roll over and die. (laughs) Even more if you bring in Mewtwo Y EX. (laughs) So, yeah, the Power Creep has started to come into play, and I think part of that is is because they do have that expanded format now. And part of it's because, hey, we have Megas now. (laughs) We need to make them stronger. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that is a thing. And apparently we moved completely off of VTC. Oh, yeah, way off. Uh, My bad. 
Uh. I was like, there's not many people I can just sit down and, like, talk Pokemon with, like, all over the place. Like, I can go tell my sisters, my parents, and stuff. They don't know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm this, unfortunately in the same boat. Um, I talk to a couple friends, but I can't really talk Pokemon with them because, obviously, um, it's one of those... Hey, man, I respect you and all, but why in the world are you still playing Pokemon? <laughs> Basically what one of them's like, so it's like, aw. I get shot down whenever I try to talk Pokemon. It's sad. And then um, when I do talk to Mom, I and if the topic does come up, she's just like, um, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I get, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. Or, like, I'm sitting there, like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to figure out this last member for my team, and I need to figure out what's working. They're like, well, good luck. And I was like, well, if only I had someone, like, if I only had, like, a few people to come over and, like, help me or whatever. So. Yeah, that is something I would like to be able to do. Thankfully, I do have a couple of online friends that I bounce ideas off of at times, but most of the time it's just kind of up to me. And yeah. It's frustrating when that happens. So, I guess that is one nice thing about the IPL. We're finding other battlers we can start bouncing ideas off of. <laughs> yeah. So, yay. <laughs> <sighs> if they would all stay here. Yeah, that would be great, too. That, that's <laughs> something I hope starts to happen. <laughs> yeah. And I guess one of the things we might consider doing is other side IPL stuff to kind of, you know, encourage kind of um, team slash league cohesion. Just like, hey, we're going to have just a side thing where we all talk about the League or Pokemon or whatever and just have basically a giant group call or something. All kind of like, like podcast things or whatever? Yeah, something like that. Or even do like, hey, I know this isn't IPL League stuff, but why don't we build the ultimate team and then crush the ladder? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I I, I think we could even title the series Crush the Ladder. No, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> <about it>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That would be kind of fun. And speaking of the ladder and banned Pokemon, every single time I get curious enough to try one of the new Pokemon, it ends up banned. <sighs> mm, that's the thing about VGC. Things don't get banned that easy. That's true. That it's true. more of, they're basically, like right now, just mythical Pokemon are banned, and that's about it. So you can use just about anything else. Which is nice. Um, that is very nice. But just as an example, uh, back in Gen 5, I was like, hey, I'm going to create a Genesect. Okay, I've created it. I'm going to find a battle, and I'll do that, like, tomorrow. Tomorrow, Genesect has been banned from OU. Uh, oh. <laughs> really? I just got this made. Great. Thanks, jerks. Okay, so let's go ahead. Forget it. Let's move on. I'm going to make a Greninja. I'm going to make it a physical Greninja. And it's going to be really fun to use an OU because Power Up Punch, Shadow Sneak, the works. And then, oh, by the way, we're banning this because it got gunk shot. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even get to use it. <laughs> and yeah. It got even worse because I was about ready to do something with Hoopa and Bound. I was like, I'm going to try this thing. Banned. Oh. <laughs> it's happened to so, me like six times now. <laughs> and with OU, things get banned a lot easier. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, which I kind of understand because it's like... Aegis Slash, it was so centralizing, it kind of had to go. Yeah. But at the same time, it was just so frustrating, because I was like, I've made an Aegis Slash now, and <laughs> I can't use it. Blast you. <laughs> uh. So, it, it's definitely one of the, the downsides to playing in the OU and UU tiers and stuff. So, that is kind of a nice draw to VGC, but yeah, I could see us doing the uh, like Crush the Ladder series as a team. Uh, maybe upload it to all the channels or rotate it between channels, something, you know? Yeah. I so, think rotating it would probably be the best. Who? I said I think rotating it would probably be the best. Oh, I thought you said Rytendo for a moment. It's like, no, no, he, no. He left. And he, yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I th I think we could rotate it, like, have the first video go to maybe Jack, then the next one go to 
you, and then Grant, maybe me next, and then so forth and so on. So it would give us something extra to kind of do to keep us motivated for the season and just kind of have, like, a buddy-buddy system going on. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think we might want to pitch that idea. I mean, if they don't actually hear it in this video. That's true. Um, but regardless. Uh, so, I've noticed you had some trouble with a Bronzong or two. In VGC? Oh, yeah. No, I think, and later on this, this week, and I think in Thursday's video or something, we have more troubles with it. Oh, dear. I just, I just need a fire-type move. Uh, but I'm so drawn to not having a fire type move on my team because I have primal Kyogre. Yeah, that's And with the rain that's not that's just a wasted move. Yeah. You could try to run a ghost move. That's pretty good coverage overall anyway. That's true. Um plus, you know, super effective on the uh Bronzong, so Yeah, because I was gonna run a fire move for Ferrothorn, but I've noticed that with Landers and Kangaskhan, Ferrothorn's not too much of a problem. Yeah. That's and then, that's yeah. true. Um, so I have to think about it. I just got to figure out who can learn a ghost type move. And of course, there's always the uh, divine move known as knockoff. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm. I noticed you were having the Bronzong problem, so I was just like, maybe bring it up there. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been trying to. I'm. I'm creating a new team for next week because people want to see a new team. So. Oh, that'll be fun to see. Yeah, I'm gonna try uh, that out. I if I was running VGC, I'd probably run Primal uh, Groudon myself, just because you know that fire plus just the bulk slash power of Primal Groudon. No, oh, yeah, I think I'm I'm thinking of trying to use that this next week because I I personally like Kyogre better, but if you don't win the Weather War and the Sun's up, then you can only like Ice Beam with Kyogre. At least yeah. with Groudon, you've got Precipice Blades, so you've got. Rock side if you want to run that. Mm -hmm. You have other options. Yeah, I mean, you could even run, like, uh, Thunder Punch, I think, so. Yeah. Primal Crowd on just, or, and even set up rocks, but that, I don't think that's so good in VGC. Not unless your opponent has, like, three Talon Flames or something, yeah. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, the, I, I think, honestly, Kyogre really didn't get a very kind treatment this generation. No, I've noticed it. Like, I prefer it over Groudon, but only when we win the Weather War, because if the sun's up, then Kyogre just has problems. Oh, yeah. So. And that's the exact same situation in Ubers, where uh, Primal Groudon, I mean, Kyogre's really nice, except when Primal Kyogre, or, ah, Primal, Primal Kyogre's really good, except when Primal Groudon's around. And then as soon as Primal Groudon's around, it's like, well, I've lost. Yeah. Unless I can somehow predict it coming in and hit it with, like, a crit ice beam or something. Yep. So, I mean, the fact that Primal Groudon exists is, it's a thing, but I ended up having to start running Banded Rayquaza with Aqua Tail just so I could deal with the stupid thing. Mm. Because airlock. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, die. Get out of my face, you stupid primal. <laughs> That's another thing. Kyogre with Rayquaza is good against Groudon. But uh, only when they're in at the same time, and then you have both of your restricted mons out there, and if they both go down, you kind of just... You, you, you lose. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. It's frustrating, but... Yeah, I could see that work. That's... That, might, that would actually work pretty well in VGC now. Yeah. Um, one question, though. I haven't actually tried this, and since you do VGC, I thought I'd ask you. If you have, like, your Rayquaza and your Primal uh, Kyogre in, and then they've got the Primal Grout on its sun, the harsh sun is up, if you Mega with your, Mega Rayqua with your Rayquaza, does the air current negate the Primal Sun? Or does the Primal Sun take over? Uh, if you Mega after Primal Groudon is out there, then the wind takes over. Okay, I was... And then you can use you can use water moves on the Ooh. Groudon. That's nice. <laughs> because there are a lot of Mega Rayquazas with Waterfall to tackle Primal Groudons. I've seen a few of them. Oh yeah, 
I can see why. It's it's such a good move just to deal with Primal Groudon, and since it is such a all-encompassing threat, ugh. And then, of course, it decides to run Lava Plume just so it can get random burns. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> uh, obviously, I I mean, I don't really hate Primal Groudon now that I've dealt with it enough, you know? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just... It does dominate the Uber's meta game, And apparently VGC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Him and uh, Xerneas. Especially oh, teamed up. Yeah. Xerneas is an absolute terror. I love using Xerneas. It's a great Pokemon. I really do enjoy it. But I won't deny that it is pretty terrifying at the same time. Yeah. With the team that I've been using, though, I've figured out a way... It's not a 100% way to take out a Xerneas, but basically if I see Xerneas and think that my opponent's going to lead it, I send out Kangaskhan and Landorus, fake out the Xerneas, then Rock Slide, and then Rock Slide the second turn. And if we get a flinch on the Xerneas, I can take it out with Kangaskhan the next turn. Nice. But if we don't get a flinch, then we just we lose. Ah. Um, one thing I've noticed that does really well against Xerneas is actually Mega Scissor. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Because, oh, Bullet Punch. Yeah, Bullet Punch bypasses the speed issue, and it's strong mm-hmm. enough, especially defensive. If you invest it especially defensive, I think like 200 points, it can tank any hit from Xerneas, hmm. barring Hidden Power Fire, obviously. Yeah, uh, you don't see too many Xerneas with that. Yeah, normally Xerneas, from what I can tell, runs Moonblast slash, uh, slash Dazzling Gleam, depending if you're in singles or doubles. If you're in doubles, you might see them actually run Moonblast and Dazzling Gleam, just so they I have usually the... run both, yeah. Most, I think most people do, because sometimes you just want the single target, mm-hmm. and sometimes you want the special attack drop that Moonblast gives you over Dazzling Gleam. Plus the extra power. Yeah. Because not only is Moonblast just naturally stronger, but... It doesn't have the 25% drop, or is it 50? I think it's 25. I think so. Um, so, Moonblast is quite a bit stronger, just naturally, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Xerneas usually carries, like, Thunderbolt or something like that, too. Another option you can also do is actually uh, Ho-Oh. Yeah. I've I've seen a few hoes. Like when I went to regionals, I think I faced one and I knocked it out before it could do anything because oh. I had rock slide on Ooh, my landorus. That'll, that'll do yeah. it. And then I did that, and I also had uh, super fang on my crowbat, so I super fanged it and the rock slid it and it took it out. So if it was built to survive a rock slide, it's not after super fang. No, uh, I don't think you really want a ho ho to take rock slide anyway. No, <laughs> um, but it is. It has, like, base 100 and... I'm wanting to say 130, but I think it might be 150 special defense. Okay. It's astronomical, and it can take, without being invested in the special defense department, a plus two thunder from Xerneas with about half health remaining. That's pretty crazy. Especially if you just slap, like, a leftovers on it, then you protect the next turn, and you're back over 50. Yeah, but another thing is is that you could either go for the Sacred Fire or the Brave Bird, and I think Brave Bird is like an Oko on it, or really close to it. Oh. Depends and oh. if they're invested in defense at all. Um, so, if they're invested in defense, they're not going to do as much damage to you, because they're not, you know what I mean. They're yeah. probably not running full 252 in their special attack. They probably sacrificed a little bit to uh, take, get take some, some hits. Yeah. yeah. So, Ho-Oh, I, I can't tell you how many times I've used Ho-Oh to just shrug off a Thunder or take a Moonblast, which, of course, it resists, so it doesn't even last, mm-hmm. and just completely annihilate it. Yeah. Um, of course, it works even better in VGC for that case, because you don't have to worry about Stealth Rock. Yeah, you don't see, you don't see Stealth Rock at all, or Spikes, or... Yeah, no, I can't imagine someone bringing Fortress to VGC, although that would be <laughs> yeah. hilarious. If I saw someone bring Fortress to VGC and take the worlds, I'd just be like, you, my friend, are uh, literally one of the greatest battlers that has ever lived, if not the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Patrice Sue, but even more amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, no, most people don't run rocks in VGC because of that, so. 
uh, Ho-Oh can do some real work in VGC. Um, you also have a chance to burn Arceus, so that's nice. No E-Killer e e Arceus to worry about anymore. Burn, my friend, burn. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I think people don't use Ho-Oh as much as they should. Well, maybe I'll have to try that one of these weeks. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good Pokemon, and of course it does tie pretty well with Primal Groudon as a teammate. That's true, I've seen a few of those. Slap on Tailwind, Sacred Fire, uh, Brave Bird. I don't know if you'd want to keep Earthquake, maybe Roost instead, or Protect. Yeah, so, Roost would probably be good. Yeah, I mean, and with that extra bulk, and it does get Regenerator, so... Hmm. Enjoy switching out and coming back with another 25% health. <laughs> oh, like with your Amoongus? Oh, someone <laughs> doesn't like my Amoongus. You're not the first. <laughs> uh, that Amoongus, I, I knew I needed it because, you know, it's just such a good mon in doubles. Yeah. But I was surprised I actually got Amoongus. I'm not going to lie. I was like, that's going to be one of the first Pokemon people choose, and oh, I got it. Sweet. <laughs> I don't know what tier it is. When we were doing the draft, I was like, oh, dang it, I need to go look at all the tiers, because I just know I'm on VGC stuff, and I can't choose folks that I like mm -hmm. just in VGC, because they might not be good in OU or whatever. Yeah. But over the summer, I did, um, I think I did, like, two tournaments, like, two OU tournaments, mm -hmm. and uh, one of them, I won. Yeah. I think I won both of them. Oh, nice. But, uh, I forgot the other one was. Oops, excuse me. But I, uh, on that team I had Scrafty, I had Suicune, and I had Mega Manectric, so I just basically pulled all the, I tried to get all the pokes that I had on that <laughs> team because I knew how to use them. And you use them well, it's Mew. definitely Mew was on there too. Oh, dag nabbit, that Mew. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back to haunt of more people. <laughs> uh, I'll admit, when I saw you get Mew, I was just like, dag nabbit, why do I have to deal with a Mew? <laughs> Um, that really had me kind of worried a lot, actually. But the other one I kind of was hoping to get was Ferrothorn, and I didn't get that one, and I was just like, ah, but Ferrothorn. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted Lando T even more, though. <laughs> and Cleveland got them both. <laughs> I think you have about all of the pokes that I wanted. I was thinking of getting... Entei over Infernate, but I was like, uh, maybe I want Infernate more, so I took him. Yeah, that's over a, Entei. That's a good choice. Um, is I thought, oh yeah, it moved up from Ru. That's right. I I was thinking Entei was an Ru for a moment, and I was like, wait, no, it got Sacred Fire. It moved up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that was a, a good choice with Infernate because Fake Out, U Turn, Close Combat, just really good coverage. Yeah, but I haven't used him, so... <laughs> I think I brought him to one, and that was it. Ah, well, maybe you'll find a use for him in one of the upcoming battles. I could see it maybe work against the head Constro. He's got a lot of steals and stuff that don't appreciate fighting and fire, so... Yeah. Maybe. We'll maybe. See. He's coming up. I think it's week nine. I think it's week nine that I face him again. Uh... Yeah, you face him next in the ninth week, so. Yeah. I could see that be a time to bring Infernape. I know Jirachi wouldn't appreciate seeing Infernape. Same with Skarmory. Um, Honchkrow wouldn't terribly appreciate Infernape. I think that's why I put, like, Flamethrower on the next trick. I just had, like, fire moves everywhere. Mm. Yeah, uh, you have a lot of potential fire users. Yeah, without having a just straight up fire type or minus and for Nape, I think. I, I can't even remember, like, if you told me to list off my team, I had no clue. Uh, I got Mew, uh, Scrafty, Wow Wow, Mega Manectric, uh, Needle King, and Regirock. That's about all I can remember. Superior. Oh, yeah, yeah, Superior, because I never use him. Yeah, uh, Grand Bull. Oh, uh, Grand Bull sucks. I'd rather just not have him. <laughs> um. He's I just gotta find a better way right. for him. Yeah, no, I understand. I would almost... If he was RU, I what? would offer you, like, my Mega Steelix for it. But he's UU. 
because I like Mega Steelix. You haven't even used Mega Steelix, have you? Not yet. I haven't used it yet because it's like Mega Deancey is putting in enough work that it's like I don't know if I want to bring Mega Steelix this week. I almost brought against the head Honchkrow because he has so many, you know, physically offensive mons. But then I was like, but then he's got Arcanine. Oh, yeah. And things like that. But maybe next time I go against him, I'll bring it just because he he is mostly physically off uh, oriented. And I've looked at his battles like his Flygon tends to be more physical with like Rock Slide and Earthquake. Uh, not special, so Mega Steelix might just be something to bring against him. Maybe I'd like to see that. Yeah, I, I like Mega Steelix. It's a pretty cool Pokemon. I just haven't uh, felt it was the right time to sh- have him shine. So, just waiting to you know go. Okay, this is the week I want to bring it. Yeah. I might actually bring it against Cobalt. Wait, no, I can't because Dallas isn't here. Um, I yeah. knew I wanted to bring it against uh, Rai because it was like, okay, sure you got some special offensive threats, but you've got so many physical users that Mega Steelix will literally just sit in your face and laugh at you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, ah, I wanted to bring it. It would deal with the Bisharp, no problem. It deal with the Azumarill, kind of. <laughs> deal with the Mega Beedrill. Deal with the Togetic. Deal with the Swellow, the Hariyama, and the Malamar. So it's like, yeah, I'm bringing Mega Steelix against New England. Aw, he's... I can't <laughs> play him. <laughs> so, yeah, I was pretty sad when that happened, because it's like... That was going to be my week to have uh, the premiere of Mega Steelix. Mm. But, yeah, no, it, it's definitely one of those things. Have you used Cafagragus yet? I don't think you have. No, no, I forgot he was on my team until you said it right now. I know we were talking about him in the chat for a bit, but no, I have not. Uh, I like playing with the safe pokes that I know how to use. Mm-hmm. Well, So throwing Mawile in there this last week, it was, it was a little, little bit new, but I knew I needed Mawile for that Mega DLC. And it did its job. Uh, blast it. Yep. <laughs> I'm sad. I wanted to keep my DLC. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, I saw it the past weeks it, it caused trouble, so I was like, I need to get rid of it fast. Oh, yeah. Um, I knew Mega Dancy would be such a key player, especially when I saw the OU picks, and I was like, wait, there's a common weakness against Rock and Fairy going on here. Hmm. <laughs> Save for, obviously, a couple choices, but, like, nothing really wants to take a... Dazzling Gleam on Ritendo's team, except maybe Bisharp, but then it has to deal with the potential Earth Power. Um, yeah. Fl- Fire Flame has to worry about um, the Hidden Power Fire and or the Earth Power for his OUs. Uh, Lando doesn't really care about Mega Deancey, though, so lame. <laughs> um, which is another reason why I wanted Lando. <laughs> uh <laughs> And to think, I almost chose Scissor, and I I really almost did. I, I really wanted to, but I was like, there are so over many Deancey? fire types. Yeah, I almost picked it over Dancy. Oh. Because I love Mega Scissor, and I've had it do so much work for me so many times, and I was just like, you know what? Plus six bullet punch will destroy souls, but look at all those fire types. There's Megazard Y, there's Megazard X. There is... Yeah, I think Charizard's on... Three different teams. I'm uh, like, oh gosh, so much, so much fire. Uh, just two. You got X and or Y. just two. No one chose regular. Oh, okay. no one chose regular. I'm kind of surprised because, um, if they had like a sun user, they could solar power, and that's just horrifying. Yeah. But yeah, no, there's only the two Zards. But at that point, I was like, okay, there are. Two of the Mega Zards here. <laughs> there are. Uh, there's a Breloom, so that's kind of scary. I need something to bounce that back. Uh, there's a Gengar, which, I mean, it wouldn't be a problem for uh, Scissor unless it was carrying Hidden Power Fire and a Focus Sash, but. Um, all these Mons that. And then Magnazone commonly runs Hidden Power Fire just to deal with Steel type, so it's like. I better not. I want to, but. 
it would just die against all the OU fire attacks. And your main metric also played a role in that. Oh, I love playing Goro Mega Manectric. It, it's it's a horrifying. It does so much damage. <laughs> it does. It it's does. not even stab, and it just it does so much. Yeah, it really made my life miserable when I was team building because you know, if, when I saw the main metric, I was just like, I need something that can deal with fire and electric, and I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it could also get. Hidden Power Ice is good with Mega Manectric, too. It is. That was I think I've run that a few times. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's usually the most common set. Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, and HP Ice. I mean, that's not going to be in doubles, because, you know, Protect such a good, is such a good move in doubles, but... Mm. That's kind of the common OU running set. So I was like, that's pretty terrifying coverage. But there is one Pokemon that doesn't care too much about that. Heatran, I need you! <laughs> <laughs> Another reason was that Zard Y, because it's like, what is Zard Y going to do to a Heatran? Yeah. So. That was that was another thing. I was like, Mawile can take out Mega Deoncey, but I need something to take on that Heatran, because if you have, have Heatran out there with Mega Deoncey, Mawile can't do anything, because it's going down. Oh, yeah. So, I thought I saw your Minetric have Hidden Power Ground on it this week. Yeah, let's see. On my team, I'm looking at my team, I had um, Hidden Power Ground on Manectric. I had... And then just Earth Power on Nido King. Mm. The, yeah, that Nido King. That had me scared. I was like, you're gonna have this thing fast with Life Orb, and it's gonna kill something. And if I leave my Heatran in, it's gonna die, and I didn't even notice that it was faster anyway. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still annoyed with myself over that. But you would have survived a heat wave from Heatran because of that assault vest. Mm -hmm. So, probably a good move. I mean, I could have earth powered, but I don't know if that would have even taken it out because it's lack stab. And again, you have the assault vest. Yeah, I think maybe at most fifty or sixty percent. But Nidoking takes a lot. Like I think, um, uh, who has Hydreigon? Uh, Hydreigon is Fire Flame, I believe. Yeah. Uh, he had Hydreigon. Okay, yeah, because I was going against him, and yeah, he used Earth Power, and I forgot that it gets Earth Power, but Nido King lived it. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that was really impressive, and I was just, at the time, I was just like, wow, I knew Nido King. I thought Nido King was kind of frail. I mean, powerful, but yeah, frail. Dick and Assault Fest on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that reminds me, I had a, a friend that sometimes runs Assault Fest Greninja. And it actually does work at times. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to Draco Meteor you. I'm going to live it. What? I'm not well, but I lived it. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> and I, I don't get how he got that to work, but he gets it to work, so good on him, I guess. <laughs> I, I think my personal favorite Assault Vest user is Kong Kelder. Mm, yeah. That's, I mean, I like Scrafty. Just because you got Intimidate, you got Fake Out. That's a good one to use it on. Um, I probably would use the uh, Shed Skin myself, just because mm. I hate status. <laughs> but Intimidate's really good, too, so... When I saw that your Scrafty had Intimidate, though, it was just like, hallelujah, I can burn this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, that was... It was definitely an interesting bit. <laughs> I still love your face when I pain splitted my Amoongus and protected it. You were just like, what? <laughs> yeah. I did that because I wanted you to target Weezing <laughs> so I could get a safe switch in. Mm. I didn't really... I, know, I knew Weezing wasn't really doing much, so I was like, oh, I don't really need to go after it. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I was just like, well... You can kill my Weezing, I want you to anyway, and I want you to target it instead of my Amoongus, so that way I can get your Mew to sleep. Because that was something that was just had me scared the entire match. As soon as I saw that Trick Room, I was terrified of it. <laughs> oh. uh, 
goodness, that was a very scary Pokemon to see. But, yeah, I... I'm still surprised your Nido King took that Earth Power, though. Good grief. So, I, power is all best. Indeed. Hydreigon <laughs> isn't exactly weak, either. It has, like... One... 30 special attack, I think it is? I could be wrong. Mm. <clears throat> I, I'm wanting to say 130. I don't... I think that might be, like... I don't even remember at this point. Uh, it's 125. Okay, so it was close. It's close. Yeah, close. Uh, I, I try, but... Uh, regardless, that was a very... Um, interesting hit that you lived. So... <laughs> yeah, I was just... Wow. <laughs> Another Pokemon I thought would do... Oh, right, then, Ryan, I was looking at the wrong team. I was like, wait, when did Fireflame have Reuniclus? <laughs> I was looking at Bryce's <laughs> team. <laughs> and I was just like, why didn't he bring Reuniclus? <laughs> that would have been horrifying, too. Uh, but, you know, speaking of the Assault Vest, uh, Jack used that against me, too, and it was just like, ah. Oh. Last you, Jack, I really wanted to take that thing out with the, the Swampert. Because I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had Hidden Power Grass on my Dragonite just for that Swampert, and it was like, ah, I have an Assault Vest, I'm not dying. That would have been really yeah. nice to take out, but... Ah. So, yeah, Assault Vest is really ruining me today <laughs> in this entire <laughs> league. Blast it. Stop bringing Assault Vest, people. <laughs> and of course now... Uh, I next time I'm against you, I'm just going to throw Assault Vest on everything. Uh, of course. Blast it? <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything about it. Like, and... I'm not even going to have... I'm not even going to have Mega Manectric. It's just going to be Assault Vest Manectric. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can, can that even be done? I think... I thought you had to keep know. your uh, forms. I don't wrong. know. I could be wrong. <laughs> I think that's a... Um, Honchkrow question, Marcos question. <laughs> Probably. But, yeah, that would just be really annoying. Hey, I have Assault Vest Superior, Assault Vest Sweet Coon, and all these Assault Vesters. Uh, I'm almost tempted to now bring, like, Guts hair across, just so, in case you do end up burning it with Sweet Coon. <laughs> just like, okay, <sighs> I'm gonna hit harder now. Uh, but, yeah, no. Um... Assault Vest has been a bit of an issue for me when you <laughs> blasted Jax surviving with the Swampert and you with being able to possibly survive the Heatran and she's like, ah, dang nabbit. <laughs> <sighs> so, yeah, I, I don't think it's really my Achilles heel, but it is a, it's a heel I don't enjoy, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my word. So, actually, I did have one kind of random question for you. Um, if you right. got to redraw, like, if you had a new draft, what would you have picked, like, out of anything? Out of anything? Mm -hmm. mm, let's see. I don't know, I like my top tier, like my OU ones, my UU ones. So it's just like Copacabras, Auroras. I'd, I'd rather just take other ones. I don't know. There are probably some other better folks out there. Durant, that gave me a problem. Yeah, that Durant was a bit of an issue for you. Yeah. Did work. Um, Cofagragus, the, the sets that I think work best on it is the defensive set with like uh, Will Wisp, Pain Split, and then like Shadow Ball and uh, maybe Protect since it is doubles. Or the Nasty Plot Trick Room set. That one I don't think yeah. works quite as well as in doubles, because, you know, you can only target single things. But your slower things take advantage of Trick Room too, so... It's not a complete loss in that regard. And you could sacrifice the uh, the Nasty Plot for will o -Wisp, just so you have a bit more survivability. Yeah. But I like sticking with the things I know what will hurt. 
No, I understand. Auroras, the only thing I can think of is maybe like Scarf Blizzard with um, uh, Snow Warning. That's about the only thing I can think of with Auroras. Yeah, I just got it because I think that's my only ice type, and I wanted so, I wanted something with ice in case if I needed it. But then Scrappy's got ice punch, Needle King's got ice beam. I didn't need it. No, I understand. Um, honestly, now if I if I was redrawing, I might have dropped Zatu for uh, uh, Stoutland. Maybe Stoutland, mm. uh, because just it's pretty powerful in its tier. Um, it has Scrappy, so it can hit ghosts. And fighting normal is not the worst coverage if you have Scrappy, so. I mean, it's not going to do a lot to Grand Bowl with its Intimidate, but. Uh, no. I have so much Intimidate on my team. <laughs> I noticed. It's just. I've like, got. Uh, I got Mega Manectric. Um, who else? Scrappy. Long while. And Grand Bowl. And Granville, yeah. So four Intimidators. Uh, when you just kept on bouncing it in, I was like, well, I was thinking about Diamond Storming, but now there's really no point. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wanted to make sure you didn't Diamond Storm, because I was like, that's that's something that's going to hit both my pokes, and I don't want them to take that. I'd rather take a Dazzling Gleam. Yeah. Um, I, I actually was running Moonblast just because um, how I had that particular DNC set invested. It just needed... It, would be too weak to uh, use Dazzling Gleam. Mm -hmm. I, I was running a little too much into the attack department, which if I if I was to redo that week, I probably would have run it more specially offensive and just like, maybe even not even bring the Diamond Storm and Calm Mind instead. Mm. Because after a Calm Mind, you're dealing with base 160 special, or I think it's 160. Yeah, 160 special attack. With a plus one behind it, pretty scary thing. Yes. Yeah. So I thought about doing that a couple times, but it's like, but then I have to set up, and then uh, everyone will be targeting it, which kind of could play in my favor with protect shenanigans, maybe. But I, I didn't want to risk it that week. I should have though. What's <laughs> uh, <laughs> my intimidate? Yeah, with your Intimidate core, there really was no point in bringing the uh, Diamond Storm. <laughs> you have too many Intimidators for it to work. <laughs> Unless I was the clear body, you know, not Mega right away. But then I'm mm. as fast as Molasses, so that's kind of pointless too. <laughs> uh. So yeah, it's just one of those, I'm in a rock and a hard place if I'm trying Diamond Storm shenanigans against you. Uh. <laughs> but good grief when you kept on intimidating it, it literally was there's literally no point in me trying to diamond storm is there <laughs> uh. so this has been a little bit longer than I, I, wish you did. I wanted to see how much damage it would do I'd be like it's, it's not going to do anything yeah, it, no, no. Um, at that point, it literally would do nothing, so... This has been a lot longer. Oh, yeah. I was like, well, we'll talk the week eight, and then we'll talk uh, the intermission, and we'll be done. Uh, I guess we're going to go longer. I'm okay with this. <laughs> but I think we should probably wrap this up for tonight. I mean, I'm more than willing to do more, but since you have to get up tomorrow and everything... Yeah. So, I guess this I is do. the end I of... I've up and drive to school. Oh, well, good luck with school tomorrow. Um, hope it goes well. But, yeah, since you do have that tomorrow, I guess I will call this the end of the video podcast uh, thing. Well, it was good seeing you tonight, and people... YouTubers and all that, please go take a look at Leffa. She's got some good content. And until next time, I'll see you then. And